In this video for Math 98, we're going to cover problems from section 12.3. This is from homework number 3. These are like problems 1 through 7 and problem 20. It involves simplifying rational expressions where we involve multiplication and division. Again, let's take a look back to arithmetic. Do you remember how to do a problem like this in arithmetic? You might say, oh yeah, I just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Now, if you had to do this without a calculator, though, 8 times 25 and 35 times 32 were pretty difficult. So one thing you might have done is you might have said, look, 8 goes into 8 once and 32 four times. 5 goes into 25 five times and 5 goes into 35 seven times. And then you might have said 1 times 5 is 5 and 7 times 4 is 28 and gotten that as your answer. Now, to multiply fractions, we just multiply the numerators and divide by the product of the denominators. So, how does this work for rational expressions? Well, it's the same way. You could say 1 times x squared is x squared, and x times 1 is x. And now, don't forget to simplify this. x squared over x would be x over 1, or just plain old x. I could do the same thing here a times b squared is a b squared and b times a squared is b a squared and again don't forget to simplify these are factors not terms so I can say a goes into a once a squared goes into a times b goes into b once goes into b squared b times so 1 times b is b and 1 times a is a now here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. This looks difficult to multiply out. So I'm going to go back to my example here. One of the things that I did here was I looked for common factors and I canceled them out first. Now remember, with rational expressions, it's a little harder to look for common factors. And you have to remember the difference between common factors and terms. A and x squared are factors here, but the cx and c aren't factors, they're terms. So I'm going to factor this second fraction first. I'm going to pull a c out of here. That would leave me with x plus 1. Now, ax and x squared, I can cancel an x because x goes in x1 times, x goes in x squared x times a and a squared, I can divide that out, and c and c, I can divide that out. So here I end up with x times 1 times x plus 1 over 1 times 1 times a, and that would be my answer. Or if I wanted to multiply it in, I could do this. Now this technique can be summarized in this little chart here. To multiply rational expressions, factor completely all numerators and denominators in your problem. Then divide out all common factors, and then multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators what's left. Let's look at a little more difficult problems. Let's look at this one. Well, let's look at our numerators. x plus 2, my first step says factor all the numerators, can't factor that, it's already factored. But x squared minus 5x minus 6, yes, that's x minus 6, x plus 1. Okay? And this one, x plus 6, can't factor that. But here, x plus 3x plus 2, x squared plus 3x plus 2, I get an x and an x, and a 2 and a 1, and I can write it like that. Once I have it written like this, x minus 6 and x plus 1 are terms, and x plus 2 and x plus 1 are terms here. So this x plus 2 and this x plus 2 can divide out, and this x plus 1 and this x plus 1 can divide out. What's left? x minus 6 over x plus 6. And remember from the last section, don't cancel these x's or these 6's. 
Why don't you try this one on your own and start the video again when you're ready. Okay, I'm going to factor my numerators. This first one, I can take an x out. This second one, just x squared, it's already factored. First denominator is already factored. Second denominator, I'm going to factor as a binomial. And I'm going to have 2 and 1, and both of these are minus. Okay? Here, these are factors now, so those will divide out. x minus 2 will divide out. And what do I have left? x squared over x minus 1. And I'm finished. What about division? You might recall that this problem from arithmetic, what you did is you took the first fraction, you left it the same, then you changed division to multiplication by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal was just replacing the numerator and the denominator. So I just flip this fraction. And that would be 25 over 18. And again, we could just leave it like that. So we changed division to multiplication by the reciprocal. And then we multiplied the result. Don't forget to divide out any common factors. I couldn't do that in that case. Let's take a look at this problem. This is a rational expression. Would it be the same? Yes, it's the same. We're going to change 1 over a. We're going to leave that the same. Then we're going to multiply. We're going to change division to multiplication, but we're going to multiply this by the reciprocal. So 1 times 1 is 1. a times a squared is a cubed and b cubed. OK, we're done. See if you can try this one on your own and start the video when you're ready. OK, first thing I'm going to do is change division to multiplication by the reciprocal. Now, I could do this like the last problem, but remember my don't forget to divide out common factors. Since a and a squared, everything's a factor there, not a term. a goes into a once, into a squared a times. And b and b to the fourth, b goes into b once, and b to the fourth b cubed times. I have 1 times b cubed, or b cubed, and 1 times a, or a. Same procedure for more complicated ones, except they are more complicated. Step 1, change division to multiplication by the reciprocal. Step two, this is like problems we did earlier. We're going to factor all the numerators. They can't be factored. And we're going to factor the denominators. Okay? So if I factor the denominator here, I get x minus 2 times x minus 2. I factor the denominator here, I get x times x plus 2. Okay, now everything is a factor here. So I can divide out the x plus 2s. I can divide out the x minus 2s. And I'm left with 1 on the top and x minus 2 times x. And you can probably just leave that in that form. Or if WebAssign wants you to, you can multiply the x in. Let's see if you can try this one on your own and start the video when you're ready. So I change division to multiplication by the reciprocal. Then I factor each one. I can factor out an x here. Can't do anything to this numerator. Factor out an x out of this denominator. This one, x minus 4 times x minus 4. Here, x goes in x once into this x once x minus 4 goes in once here and once here. 1 times 1 times x gives me x. 1 times x plus 4 times x minus 4 gives me that. I am happy with that answer, but WebAssign might prefer you to multiply out the denominators. And that will give you x squared minus 16. OK. So let's look at some applications. One application is the idea of complex fractions. Let's suppose you're uh, working for NASA and you're 
firing a rocket that's going 100 miles, 900 miles per hour. And you know that it also gives you 100 gallons per hour of fuel. Well, what does that mean? Well, 900 divided by 100 is 9. And what's miles per hour divided by gallons per hour? Well, let's take a look at that. Miles per hour divided by gallons per hour. Again, if you use this idea of multiplying by the reciprocal, you have miles per hour times hours per gallon. And the hours cancel and you end up with miles per gallon. This is an example of what we in real life call a complex fraction. A fractions that contain fractions in either the numerator or denominator or both. Now there are various ways, many ways to do this. We're going to look at one way in this section. This is 8 fifteenths over 4 fifths. So you could write that as 8 fifteenths divided by 4 fifths. Now, if you write the complex fraction this way, where this is the numerator and this is the denominator, that becomes a problem that you know how to do. We've been spending a little time changing division to multiplication by the reciprocal, dividing out common factors, and I end up with 2 thirds as my answer. How does that work when we have this more complicated example? Well, you could write the same thing. Here's the numerator. We say divided by the denominator. We change division to multiplication. And here, be a little careful. What about 3 minus x and x minus 3? Do you remember from the last video that that is negative 1? And here I have 3 times x, and x times x times x. So one of these x's will divide into x cubed and give me x squared. So I have negative 1 times 3, which is negative 3, and x squared times 1, which is x squared. And that is my answer. Here's a really complicated one. Maybe you should see if you can do this and then start the video again when you're finished. Okay, 2 minus x over x plus 2 divided by 4 minus 2x over x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, let's write this. It's a division problem, so let's multiply by the reciprocal. So 2 minus x and x plus 2 I'm going to leave alone. But I'm going to factor these. x plus 4, x plus 4. So x plus 2 times x plus 2. And 4 minus 2x, just for fun, I'm going to take out a negative 2. That will leave me with, if I take out a negative 2, that will leave me with minus 2 plus x, which is the same thing as saying negative 2 times x minus 2. You'll see why I do that. Okay, and here x plus 2's will divide out, and 2 minus x and x minus 2, there's that negative 1 again, and I get negative 1 times x plus 2 over negative 2. Negative 1 and negative 2, I can just write this as x plus 2 over 2. Do not cancel these 2's, that is a term, not a factor. I hope this video has been useful.